At this time, member strategic Tim Greenberg, a gold movement, a bookish Shonibara, joins me now on the news. Good to have you join me at this time. It's five years down the line. 112 girls are still in captivity. Buki, tell me, what is the stance of your group at this time? Um, the stance of the Greenberg Girls Group um, is that today is a reminder of our collective failure is a reminder of the government's failure to fulfill its primary responsibility of securing um, lives, particularly, and um, properties. Our Chibo girls were abducted five years ago. So the fact that we are having to commemorate a day like this, we are having to talk about 112 girls still in abduction. We are having to talk about Leah Sharibu. We are having to talk about Alice and Gada. It simply communicates um, a deep sense of of pain, of sadness, of, of agony, of anguish. And not forgetting that 34 of the Chibok girls' parents have died. Some of them are healed. Um, some of them have grief-related illnesses um, in relation to their girls that have been abducted. So today is a sad day for us, and yet another day for us to remind the government of its primary responsibility. Well, the government uh, has promised to do all within its part to ensure that the remaining girls are back. Tell us about the interaction of your group with the government in securing the release of these girls and others. Um, I have to say first that commendably, we've had 107 girls got back um, directly related to the efforts of the federal government. Um, there has been 21 and 82 girls that were brought back by way of negotiation and four um, indirectly by way of uh, military actions. Um, but then when we look at the expectations from the government, we then connect to the question of our relationship and our communication with the government. It has not been good. It's not been like the way it used to be where there was um, access and there was opportunity for us to communicate what is going on. But then for us, it goes beyond having that direct access to the government. It's also the expectation that the government should be able to communicate directly with the parents of the girls that have been abducted um, and reassure them. That's what we expect. So we've not had that much of communication directly with us, but we expect much more in terms of communication between the federal government and the relatives of the girls that are still in abduction. Well, there are concerns in some quarters that focus on the Chibo girls uh, seem to give uh, an impression about the fact that there's so much importance placed on the girls and uh, uh, some believe that this has actually emboldened the in insurgents in some way. Uh, what do you think? Undeniably, uh, there has been focus on the Chibo girls mainly because by the time they were abducted, it was an unprecedented action. We've not had a situation where girls in that large number were abducted. Um, so it's understandable if there is focus on them and that global outcry that we had. But it would be unfair to say that we've only focused on the Chibok girls because we've used the Chibok girls situation to serve as an entry point to the old conversation around peace and security in Nigeria to the conversation around missing persons, to the conversation around um, ending the Boko Haram insurgency and ensuring that there is peace. Um, we understand also that because of the globalization of the campaign and so many other factors, um, the insurgents saw the Chiba girls as their prized asset. Um, but if the government had not failed in protecting the girls in the first place, we wouldn't have given the insurgents the power to use our girls as a negotiating tool. Bokeh Shonibara, member strategic team, bring back our girls' movement. Many thanks for joining us on the news.